This video might prove to be a bit controversial because I'm going to present an argument that you might find debatable one way or another. The argument lies with how Power Query deals with sorting. Now, whether you're using Power Query in Excel or Power BI, this issue stands. This is a Power Query behavior that I did not understand for a long time, and I thought something was broken in Power Query. Let me demonstrate the issue. I'm using Power BI for this example, but the same thing happens in Excel. I'll import a data source, which is gonna be an Excel workbook, and it's going to be this file right here called broken sort. I'm going to select this table called data and bring it into Power Query. Now this is just standard transactional information. I'm not going to perform any transformations on this table, but I want you to notice that the table is sorted in ascending order by sales rep because that's the way it is in the Excel file. Without any transformations, I'm going to go ahead and load this back into the Power BI data model. Switching to the table view, Notice how this table has been sorted by region. Now it appears to be sorted in ascending order by sales rep, but the whole table was sorted in ascending order by sales rep in the Excel file. Now we're doing a primary sort by region, and of course we're going A to Z within the southeast, but the moment we switch from the southeast to northeast, then we start the alphabet all over again. So it's doing a primary sort by region and a secondary sort by sales rep. But let's go back and look at the query. The query does not have the region sorted. The entire table is completely sorted by sales rep only as the primary sort. Well, what happens if I were to delete the region column? Let's remove that. We're still only sorted by sales rep. I'll close and load this back into Power BI data model. And now we're sorted by product. Product is now the primary sort. Sales rep is the secondary sort to product. So as long as we're in gloves, we go all the way from A to W. But then when we start over, the sort seems to have not held up. Gloves were all clustered together, but the remaining products were not. I'll go back into the query. I'll take out that remove column step, bring region back, load this back into the data model. And now we've returned our sort back to region, but region's now at the end of the table, not in the middle where it was before. So now all the southeasts are together and then the northeast and the northwest, etc. So it doesn't seem to be respecting my sort request. And sometimes it doesn't even respect my column arrangement. This is not a Power Query problem. This is an issue with the VertiPack engine that is storing this data in the data model. Power Query is simply handing the data off to the VertiPack engine to perform the compression and the optimization. And it is the VertiPack engine that is overriding Power Query. Now I'll show you why this is really a non-issue and hopefully this will quell any concerns about something that's going wrong, which actually is not. Power Query will transform our data, but it's not responsible for how that data is stored in the data model. That responsibility falls to the VertiPack engine. The official name for the VertiPack engine is the X-Velocity In-Memory Analytical Engine. It was codenamed VertiPack while it was in development, but that name just sort of stuck. The VertiPack engine will run in SQL Server Analysis Services Tabular. It also runs in Power BI Service, both at the server level and the desktop level and it runs in Power Pivot in Excel. The VertiPack engine is responsible for making the data model as efficient as it can possibly be, both in terms of storage and performance. To understand this, we need to understand VertiPack compression. When a table is loaded into a data model, each column is stored as a separate data structure. Now these structures are going to be compressed. Compression aims to reduce the memory footprint because the smaller the model, the better use of the hardware. Plus the smaller the model, the faster everything runs because it takes less to scan. There are three main compression schemes. The first is called value encoding. The second is dictionary encoding. And finally, there's run length encoding or RLE. Now, sometimes these encoding schemes can be combined and this is known as dual encoding. I want to show you an example of each of these compression schemes, and then you'll better understand why that quote unquote broken sort is occurring. We'll begin with an example of value encoding. Here I have a column of units sold, and I just have random numbers generated here between say low 200s, high 200s. There are a lot of duplicates within this unit sold column. To store these numbers in memory would require eight bits per value. And here are the binary equivalents of those numbers. But a trick we can do is to determine the smallest and largest values of the set. If we subtract the smallest value from the largest value, the difference between those two points is only 14. So really everything that came before 235 is irrelevant. All of the units sold that are within that 14 range can actually be stored in half of the bits. 
So by subtracting 235 from each of the units sold, we end up with a whole new set of numbers. These are the encoded versions of those units sold. Each of these values only require four bits to be stored because now we can just make a note that says, hey, if we wanna look at one of these numbers, just add 235 to it and we'll restore the original number. But we don't need to store the initial 235 count of every unit sold, just anything that comes 235 and beyond. Now value encoding only works with integers. It does not work with strings or floating point values. So if you need to work with text or floating point values, we need to come up with a different strategy. So now let's look at a strategy for encoding text. This is known as dictionary encoding. Here we have a list of countries, and many of these countries have repeated values. You can see the number of bits required to store the characters for each country. So each character has a byte, each byte is eight bits, eight bits times the number of characters. So the largest country, Australia, requires 72 bits to store that text, nine bytes. So what dictionary encoding does is it creates a table, a unique sorted list of each country, and it assigns an ID number to each of those countries. Now, instead of storing the actual countries, we only store the IDs associated with those countries. So now we get a country ID column. Since the largest value in this list is four, I'll only need a maximum of three bits to store any of these values. Now, instead of storing 72 bits per country, I only have to store three bits per country. That middle table is going to serve as a lookup table. So if I want to know what country four is, I'll go to the ID country table, find the four, and then return Mexico to my report. This strategy can be used with integers, strings, or floating point values. Now the third major encoding scheme used by VertiPak is known as run length encoding. Run length encoding capitalizes on the repetition or cardinality of a list. So here I have a list of colors and this list is sorted. For the sake of demonstration, we'll assume there are 100 entries for red, 75 entries for green, and 150 entries for blue. Instead of storing each of those entries in memory, VertiPak creates a table of each color, red, green, and blue. And what it does is it makes a note of where in the list that particular color starts. In this case, red starts on row one, green on row 101, and blue on 176. And then it shows the number of entries of that color, 100 for red, 75 for green, 150 for blue. This way it understands that everything between one and 100 are reds without having to explicitly store it in memory. Everything between 101 and 175 are green, and everything from 176 to 326 will be blue. In reality, the start column is actually optional because the start can be calculated by summing up all of the previous counts and then adding one. In this way, the lookup table can be even smaller. In many situations, we can combine these encoding strategies to create an even smaller memory footprint. This is known as dual encoding. So here I have a list of those countries we saw earlier in the dictionary encoding example, but I've sorted the list. So with the list sorted, we could use dictionary encoding to create that lookup table and replace all of the country names with IDs. Now that we've reduced our bit footprint, having only to store three bits per country, we can use run length encoding to store the value ranges. So for my data rows table, I see each of the IDs for the countries and how many rows each country occupies. First three rows are zero, the next two rows are one, next five rows are two, the next row is three, and the last two are four. I can use those IDs as a lookup in my dictionary to determine what that country actually is. So the first three are Australia, the next two Canada, the next five Egypt, etc. So understanding that VertiPak is going to do its own thing when it comes to storing information. The point I'm trying to make is, don't spend valuable steps in your query creating all of these elaborate custom sorts because by the time it gets thrown back into the data model, all those sorts are gonna be thrown out the window. It doesn't matter that it's not preserving that sort in the data model because the sorting will be performed at the visual level once you start placing this data in visualizations on your report page. That's where you need to focus your sorting energy. Now, I am by no means saying that sorting serves no purpose in Power Query. Sorting can be used in preparation of performing some more sophisticated operations. But my point is don't worry about putting this table in some pristine hierarchical sort so that it looks really good when you send it back into Power BI because VertiPak is going to step all over that.
Now, the exception to that thought would be when using Power Query in Excel. This data is listed in sales rep order, but let's say that I want to create a primary sort by region, a secondary sort by product, and a tertiary sort by state. Now, there may be other processing done to this table, but in the end, when I dump the output, I want that sort. Well, let's see what happens if we do this in Excel. We'll go up to Data, From Table Range. I'll perform my primary sort by region, ascending, my secondary sort by product, ascending, and my tertiary sort by state, ascending. So within Midwest, four baseballs, I sold to these states. And I want that hierarchical sort to be preserved in Excel. If I close and load this back into Excel, all three levels of that hierarchical sort were respected. If I decided I wanted my primary sort to be supplier, right-click Edit, I'll clear that old sort and redo the sort. Primary sort by supplier, secondary sort by product, tertiary sort by state. So now region is all scrambled. I'll load this back into Excel, and those sorts have been respected. The reason they're respected, because this is the final output, the final result for the user. We need to respect those sorts. But what does it look like in the back end if we had added it to the data model? Well, let's right click on that query, go to load to, and let's add it to the data model. Look what happened to the table. Its primary sort is now region, like it was before. Supplier is now the secondary sort, Product is the tertiary sort, and state is the quaternary sort. Because Vertipak stepped in and said, I think the first thing we should do to maximize our memory footprint is to store this by region, because then I can use all my encoding schemes. If we were to go up to data and go into the data model, this takes us into Power Pivot. Notice that our primary sort is region. I'll close that. This is why I was so frustrated with Power Query and Excel thinking that Power Query was screwing up the sort. Because when you add it to the data model, Vertipak steps in and says, I'm going to redo all of this. If we had not loaded it into the data model, Power Query would have sent the results back to Excel, and Excel would have just respected the query sorts. But once Vertipak gets into the equation, all bets are off. So in order to get back to what I really wanted, I would have to go into Excel, and then create my own custom sort, like sort by supplier, sort by product, and then sort by state. And now I've overwritten Vertipak's decision. Vertipak is still storing it in its order, but now Excel has redone that into what I want. If you right click and refresh, my overwritten Excel sort is respected. And the reason for that is if we go up to properties in the data tab, there's an option here that says preserve column sort filter layout. So in the background, Vertipak is doing what it's doing, but I'm overriding that. If you were to uncheck this, hit OK, right click refresh. Now we're back to what Vertipak is doing. So if you're creating a sort in Excel from a query output and every time you refresh, your sort seems to get quote unquote screwed up, go up here to properties and make sure that this preserve column sort filter layout is checked. Then just go ahead and read your sort, and it will stick for the rest of the life of the file. Much of the logic and strategy of value encoding, dictionary encoding, and run length encoding are proprietary to Microsoft, and it's unlikely that people like us will ever know what those strategies are. But these examples serve as just a high-level overview of what's happening. There's undoubtedly many more complicated things happening besides just these basic pieces of logic. So if you've ever wondered why your sorts are sometimes getting quote-unquote screwed up, now you understand why, and you also understand that in Power BI, it's irrelevant, and in Excel, it can be overridden. Thank you for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.